Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl games video. Today we're taking a look at a Junt, Collard or a Riveteers deck featuring Mr. Orfeo the Boulder as our commander. A 4 mana, 2-4 legendary Rhino Warrior, saying whenever we attack, double target creature's power until end of turn. So our deck is going to feature some high-powered creatures, lots of haste, trample and a ton of pump spells as well to combine with Mr. Orfeo's ability to set up some spectacular one-hit KOs. So let's start by taking a look at our creatures, got plenty of 2 and 3 drops as we want to get some creatures in play before playing Mr. Orfeo so we can make use of that ability right away. And at 2 mana we've got Scrap Heap Scrounger which can keep coming back from the graveyard. Blade of the Oni, a 3-1 with Menace, can maybe be reconfigured as well. Skyclave Shade also keeps coming back. Tenacious Underdog, we can blitz out of the graveyard, so you kind of notice a theme out of our black 2-drops. Then Cargan Intimidator, updated with Alchemy, gets plus 1 plus 1 and Trample until end of turn for just 1 mana. Can also make it difficult for the opponent to block. Then Rimrock Knight, we can use the Pump Spell Adventure first, and then a 3-1 afterwards. Karyotid is one of the few accelerants in this deck, but synergizes nicely with our 4-powered creatures, as it can then tap for 2 mana as opposed to just 1. Harpooner can maybe take out small flyers from the opponent, also another 3 powered creature. And then a decoy forces the opponent to block it, can also be blitzed, so also plays well with pump effect that will force the opponent to block it over and over again and maybe lose some creatures in the process. The Dreadhorde Butcher also becomes quite powerful if we can play it early and connect with it a few times as it will start picking up plus 1 counters and then also deals damage equal to its power when it dies, so that also plays well with Mr. Orfeo. Then we've got the Anarchomancer as another accelerant, giving all our red and green spells a 1 mana discount. And if you take a look at our deck, we're mostly a red green deck, just splashing a bit of black, so the Anarchomancer is perfect. And then Voltaic Brawler can also attack for 4 power and trample if we use some energy. At 3 mana, there's a Rotting Register, can get much more power for 3 mana than this. And then we've got Arnie Broken Brow, which can boast to also increase its power, which plays well with the other creatures in the deck. Bone Crusher can use it as removal, and then a 4-3 Giant afterwards. Celebrant to give us additional combat steps, also very synergistic with Orfeo, as we can trigger the ability twice in one combat step essentially. And then we also have the Fable of the Mirror Breaker for added consistency. There's some nice creatures with ETB effects that we can maybe copy with a reflection. The uh, Verger's Gearhulk comes to mind, came up in one of my practice games, can be quite satisfying. And then we also have the Reckless Stormseeker to give creatures haste and one additional power. We've got Jewel Thief making a treasure when it enters and has built-in Vigilance and Trample, which also plays well with our pump effects. And then the Crew Captain comes in with haste and indestructible the turn we play it. Then at 4 mana there's Inferno Hellion, a 7 powered Trampler, so perfect for setting up those one hit KOs. Got the Rhino, which also plays well with our various pump effects, as we'll draw a card whenever we target it. Got Questing Beast, also has some built in evasion and haste. Got the Oddity, 4 4 Trample Haste. Got the Partners, also very powerful with pump effects, as we'll be able to add more counters to our team and give them haste. Zeotaurus Envoy can provide card advantage if it hits the opponent, also perfect with Double Strike, as it can maybe trigger twice. And then at 5 mana we mentioned Verger's Gearhulk, enters putting 4 counters on our creatures and a 4-4 Trampler itself. And then we've got the Strength Incarnate, you might not recognize this card, used to be the Godzilla card, but can now also craft the 5 mana Ikoria version without the alternate art. And of course complements our deck perfectly, as lethal damage dealt to creatures we control is determined by power instead of toughness, so makes it much harder for the opponent to kill our creatures in combat. And then topping off our curve, Galta Primal Hunger, which gets a discount equal to the total power of creatures we control, so you can often cast it for just double green, and then a 12-12 Trample, and we have a ton of ways to give it haste in our deck as well, including the partners. At 3 mana we've got Reckless Stormseeker, and taking a look at our non-creature spells, there's Rhythm of the Wild, which gives our creatures a riot, so we can choose between a plus one counter or haste, makes them uncounterable as well, and then Invigorating Hot Spring can also put plus one counters on our creatures, and those will count as modified creatures that then will also gain haste. And then looking through the other non-creature spells, we have a ton of pump effects of course, which will play well with the doubling of power from Mr. Orfeo. So we've got Ancestral Anger, gives plus one power and trample and draws a card, Infuriate, plus three, which is kind of a worse version of Giant Growth, the classic green one mana pump spell. 
Got Reckless Charge also giving haste, and three additional power can be flashed back. Massive Might plus two plus two and Trample. Scale up turns our creature into a 6 4 worm until end of turn. We've got Bone Splitter as a cheap equipment giving two additional power. Add two mana, there's Antagonize. Plus four power, similar to Titanic Growth. And then a Brute Strength plus three plus one and Trample. Invigorated Rampage plus four plus zero and Trample. Run amok plus 3 plus 3 and trample to an attacking creature. Can make sure to use run amok before resolving Mr. Orfeo's ability, which works out. And then collision plus 4 plus 2 and trample can also take out flyers from the opponent. We've got Garrick Unleashed, which can also pump up our creatures or make some beast tokens. And then enlarge can also be quite effective as a finisher, giving plus 7 plus 7 and trample until end of turn. And that creature must be blocked if able. Then we've got more doubling effects with Raking Claws. Uncaged Fury and Ember Cleave all giving double strike, as well as Unleash Fury doubling the creature's power, similar to Mr. Orfeo. Then we've got our Haste Enablers, and then a few Fling effects between Thud at 1 mana and Kazul's Fury, which can also be played as a land. And then a bit more removal in the form of a Nature's Way, which also gives our creature Trample and Vigilance until end of turn. We've got Ram Through, which can also maybe deal excess damage if our creature had Trample. And Domri's Ambush putting a plus one counter on our creature, and can take out opposing creatures or even Planeswalkers. And then last but not least, a bit of mana acceleration with Into the North, Arcane Signet, Cultivate, and Great Henge, of course, adding mana, but also drawing extra cards, and can play it out pretty easily if we control a high-powered creature. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward, lots of mana fixing and dual lands, not too many creature lands, just a Hive of the Eye Tyrant in black and a Den of the Bugbear in red to apply a little bit more pressure and maybe help us end the game. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We could play Bone Splitter turn one, I think I'd rather get my tap land out of the way. And then turn to an Archimancer. Up against Rowan and Will. And a turn to search for Ascanta. Okay, well, I think I still like an Archimancer. Could also make an argument for Scrap Heap Scrounger. As we're not making use of the mana discount right away. But uh, yeah, we've got a couple nice pump spells in hand. Although sadly our land comes into play tapped here, so won't be able to play Mr. Orfeo this turn. So probably go for Scrap Heap Scrounger, as opposed to Bone Splitter Equip. And fetch up either a mountain or forests. I guess we'll go for a mountain here. Could see Will Scholar of Frost coming down. Can shrink something down or start drawing. Blink of an eye, bouncing an Archimancer. We'll get a mountain. So, could play Mr. Orfeo. Could play an Archimancer plus something else. Even a Bone Crusher Giant. Don't hate getting our commander in play. And then hit for six. And next turn we could set up some big turn with multiple pump spells and an Unleash Fury. Six mana total. And a Meteor Swarm gonna kill both creatures, sadly. Alright, that's a pretty big setback. Although we can play on Archimancer and then probably go for Blade of the Oni. Keep our Bone Crusher to maybe use the Adventure first. And then we could play a 5 mana Mr. Orfeo thanks to the discount. Rubble Reading gonna take out our lands. Ouch. So we're very far from casting an Oddity. We can kill their Planeswalker. How much damage can we deal if we set up Run Amok on Leaf Fury? 6, 12, 13, 14, so we could put them to 3. So very close. If we had green mana for Giant Growth, we definitely would have had enough. It does feel like it's worth it to go for it, since we can make use of the discount from an Archimancer. And then 
could play Bone Splitter or we could Stomp as well. I guess going for Stomp is fine. And then we'll just ignore Rowan. So run amok. Only Fury. And Bone falls to three. I'll Stomp. Put him to one. And hope they can't keep dealing with our creatures. Alright, Star of Extinction gonna wipe the board and our land. But also destroys their own Planeswalker. So next turn we can maybe play Bone Crusher. And if that gets targeted, the opponent also takes two. So they'll need to come up with something else. I guess there's Celestus, which can gain them life as well. Ascanta transforms, as foretold, to cast spells for free. And then into the story to refuel. Okay. Close to casting our Ulvenwald Oddity. For now, just a Bone Crusher. And I'm gonna keep up Giant Growth in case of a burn spell. Then of the Bugbear could also activate next turn. Anger of the Gods lets Giant Growth in response. Deals two to me as well. Big score in response, getting rid of the uh, mass manipulation, which would have killed them if they targeted Bone Crusher. Alright, Bone Crusher survives. Opponent at one. Chandra can finish off Bone Crusher, and since it's an ability and not a spell. It gets around the 2 damage, but now an untapped land for Den would still do it. And there we have it. Awesome. I guess uh, green mana for Oddity would have been nice too, but this will get the job done. GG's. Yeah, against the land destruction deck here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Yarok the Desecrated. And hand is not ideal, as all our lands come into play tapped, including Kazul's Fury. But it does have some quality creatures, and all our colors at least, so I'll try it. Lead with Temple, hopefully pick up a forest or a mountain. So Rootbound Crag comes into play untapped. And then even if we have to play a turn behind, it's a functional hand, topping off with Embercleave. Infuriate, I'll have to bottom. Turn one Grazer. It's your opponent off to a nice rampy start. Right, Swamp, not as good as Mountain or Forest, but still helpful. So I could play turn two Harpooner, or I can guarantee a turn three Jewel Thief. So we'll set that up instead. And then Jewel Thief into maybe Partners. Opponent passes. Jewel Thief resolves, makes a treasure. But might be taken out here, unsummoned to bounce it. At least we made a treasure in return. Opponent with an Innkeeper. Next turn we could see Yarok. And this turn could go Jewel Thief plus, let's say, Harpooner. Although, maybe we just keep the treasure and then next turn we can double spell. Maybe Partners plus a Pump Spell or can get Mr. Orfeo down. And we'll name Green. Pass it back. There's Yarok. 3-5 Death Touch lifelink. Okay. So we have options. Could go for Mr. Orfeo. Just attack with a 6 power Jewel Thief. That probably happens. And then hope the opponent doesn't have any creature that uh, has a powerful ETB effect that interacts with our creatures. 
the only way to guarantee kill Yarok is maybe with a Kazul's Fury here after using a pump effect. But that's going to be pretty drastic, so I don't know if we can afford to. So maybe it is fine to set up Mr. Orfeo here. And then double this. And then I'm not sure if I want to play a tapped Kazul's Fury or not. Maybe I want to start with just cantripping Ancestral Anger. Could also go for partners, cantrip Ancestral Anger on the partners, and then put three counters on the Jewel Thief. Maybe that's okay. Pick up an Oddity as well. So that can attack. Gordon takes it. And I might have to play this tapped, because we need the extra mana. And then really hope there's no Chupacabra or something similar. Just a Tatiova. Still gonna potentially gain quite a bit of life and draw extra cards. But looks like we'll get to untap with Partners and Jewel Thief, and now a Galta as well, which we can give haste with Partners. Okay. And I could even antagonize the partners first, which essentially pays for Galta. Play Galta for two mana, and then we can still Ember Cleave as well. That sounds appealing. So two mana Galta. I guess never mind, we'll be one mana short of a two mana Ember Cleave. But uh, yeah, that still seems like the play. Pump there, attack, and that's uh, a lot of damage coming across. Opponent forced to jump with Yarok. Okay, so we got rid of their main threat, although I guess Satyova is still quite powerful. Opponent falls to 12. And I could play Harpooner, or we can keep our mana to maybe set up Orfeo next turn, although Embercleaf kind of wants us to run out an extra creature. Yeah, Embercleaf would have been game here, but one mana short for that. So we'll see if they can stabilize. Burning Rune Demon, 6-6 six, six Flyer, can search up some removal. And our opponent gets a land, let's see. Probably give them the black mana, since they might have a bounce spell for single blue. Opponent passes. Okay, so we can maybe pump up Jewel Thief, double its power with Orfeo, or we can just play an Amber Cleave, but our opponent already concedes here, knowing that Orfeo is going to be good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is promising, facing Hapatra, so it could face some Death Touch Snakes, so it's a combination of Trample and Double Strike going to be key. Raking Claws plus Uncaged Fury, a little awkward, but I guess Raking Claws is quite good with Decoy. So I'll try it. And then we'll fetch up a Swamp, turn to Decoy, take it from there. Typhoid Rats, another Death Touch creature. Has to be blocked. Go and place Hapatra. That attacks, and we'll take it. So yeah, we can force them to lose Hapatra here, and then Raking Claws to keep Decoy alive. Could also Massive Might, but I think we need to save that for later. Alternative would have been just Massive Might instead of Raking Claws, which also has our decoy surviving. But again, I think that Trample is going to be pretty important for that one-hit KO. All right, it's Planet Agony, opponent's not going to mess around, and no point in using Massive Might when it's two minus one counters that will stay on our creature. So the game continues. 
Celebrant is spicy. Would I rather play Celebrant or Orfeo? Probably Celebrant. And then next turn there's a chance we can attack and exert. Rats is attacking, so they must have another blocker or removal. Binding, ouch. Okay. Well, time for our commander. And then, uh, yeah, we'll need to find some more creatures along the way, or maybe some other pump spell and just go all in on our commander. Innkeeper's fine. Colony Garden makes a plant. Gains a life. And a crew captain's not bad. Although it just gets jumped by the plant, I'm sure. So if we play Crew Captain, double its power, could Massive Might if they jump. The alternative is I could Massive Might Uncage Fury on Orfeo. How much damage are we talking? Still only like 10 times 2, I guess, is 20. Because, yeah, we would double twice. So we're actually getting somewhat close to killing them. I'm one mana short of going all in on the Crew Captain. But I guess we can go for the kill next turn on Crew Captain. Assuming both creatures survive here. So, yeah, if I were to uncage Fury, we don't have Trample, so... Don't think there's a point in using any pump effects. So the plant chumps. And then, ideally, next turn just uh, Massive Might, Uncaged Fury. Would put this up to 7. Times 2 is 14. With Double Strike is... 28 points of trample damage, which may or may not be enough. Spider Queen makes two spiders, which can gain two life as well. And a Bastion of Remembrance. Okay. So that life gain from Innkeeper might keep them in the game as well. Depending on how many blockers they leave back. Their creatures do have Death Touch from uh, Binding, but just the rats attacking. Could always draw another pump spell, I suppose. Ram through. I think that does it, because it deals excess damage to the opponents. Okay, awesome. So, Uncaged Fury. Massive Might. Attack. Face. Double. Might as well let them block first. But that's essentially 28 damage coming across. But this ramp through is going to be pretty nifty. Can kill an innkeeper. Deal 13 excess damage to the opponent's face. And sure, Bastion triggers, but we still have plenty to kill the opponent. Wow. A ramp through off the top to save the day. Although I'm sure a few other pump spells could have gotten there as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Rafine, Scheming Seer. So it could be a pretty controlling deck, although they probably have some creatures in there to enable connive. Our hand seems decent, we even have Collision as maybe an answer to their commander. Couple tap plans early. But at least our mana will be operational. So we can play turn to Karyotid if we'd like. And then hopefully pick up another untapped land for turn 3 Envoy. Hope of Girapur. And a point looking at our Snow Mountain. Okay, there's our untapped land, perfect. So I can play Envoy. And then next turn Karyotid makes 2 mana as well. And then Raking Claws, also kind of a combo with uh, Envoy, as we'll be able to enable it twice. Ooh, a Source to Plowshares. That's painful. So that's what they were maybe looking to use. So that's quite a setback. Rafine. K 
can maybe connive and put a counter on hope. Although we can still stomp it. So I can either collision, kill Rafine. We'll have to pay the one. Or I can stomp Hope of Girapur. I guess this deals 6 damage, so we can wait. And we might want to combine it with Raking Claws for double strike. So I could see the advantage of stomping Hope while we can. but sadly won't be able to play the Bone Crusher Giant. So a couple too many tap lands early on. It's gonna slow us down. But if we can dodge more spot removal, we do have a lot of combo potential with uh, Collision, Raking Claws and then double power from Orfeo. So it could still be a winnable game. Discards Elishnorn. Hopefully they don't have any reanimation effects. It's gonna be a duelists. That's fine. Well, it does look like a reanimation deck if they're playing Edgar's Awakening. Alright, so don't think we'll be able to beat Elishnorn once that's in play. So gotta hope they don't have a reanimation effect in hand. And then for now, can play Bone Crusher and then carry the taps for two. Play Mr. Orfeo. And uh, see where we're at next turn. Just an attack. So they might be digging for the reanimation spell. Okay, so can block with Mr. Orfeo if they reanimate Elishnorn, he'll die. But uh, yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter, so might as well take it. The three damage is not going to make the difference. Opponent is searching through the graveyard, there's Elishnorn. And that's probably game over. I guess we'll give it a fair shot with... Uh, Colossus, attack, doubling power, and then, yeah, I guess this is still 24 damage, so are we going to win through an Elishnorn? Maybe. Well, have to deal ourselves a little bit of damage with Bone Crusher, but, uh, I'll happily do so, that means we can deal 24 damage. Wow, it's a good thing we didn't uh, block Duelist and lose Orfeo, because we needed that doubling effect. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we're up against Jada, Mono White, Angels. So not really known for having a ton of interaction. Our hand is lacking an early creature, unfortunately. But we do have a lot of combo potential with a bit of ramp, and then Bone Splitter Unleash Fury. So maybe it's worth keeping. And then clear our thickets. Rimrock Knight I could play. Or we can into the north. And get a mountain. Could play Mr. Orfeo already, although Without any creatures in play to pump, it's not that exciting. So could see going Rimrock Knight, Bone Splitter Equip instead. And then next turn, Mr. Orfeo can get this up to 10 power already. Although Cohorts presents a nice blocker here. Antagonize could pump. So, yeah, the cohort is actually amazing with Jada. Turn 3. 3-3 three, three and a 4-4. Four, four. So I may not want to attack anymore, but I guess trading off for an angel is still worth it. And then uh, we'll have to start pumping Mr. Orfeo instead. Opponent trades. 
And we'll scry. Partners is nice. Take six. And the Sarah Angel classic. Okay. So we can play partners. Put a bone splitter on it. To put four counters on our Theo. And attack, hitting for 12. And next turn with Antagonize and Leash Fury, there's a ton of combo potential as well. We've got a 4 powered first rank Reach creature on defense as well. Sarah's Guardian giving vigilance to all creatures. Okay, so probably no harm in scrying first to see what's next. Bottom that. And then I could antagonize partners, pump Orfeo, pump partners, keep the Unleash Fury as a surprise. Although they might be both lethal threats. Yeah, attack with both. And then our opponent knows that they have to double chump. But so be it. So yeah, they can hit us back for 10, which is close to lethal, so we'll see if they can finish us off. Probably no point in moving Bone Splitter. And then another creature of the top might be necessary here. Never mind, Elspeth Resplendent will add an extra counter to finish us off. Yeah, so they had just enough here to survive. That turn 3 cohort was quite nice. Alright, GG's. Exaxes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is all pump spells, no early creatures, only two lands. Don't think I can keep. This is a little bit better. Into the north for ramp. Set up a uh, turn three questing beast. And uh, can play summits. So our mana's taken care of. And we've got a couple nice pump spells to set up Orfeo. Facing Chatterfang, so getting Trample is going to be pretty important. An Archimancer is interesting too. So could play that now instead of Into the North. Although I wouldn't be able to make use of the discount, so maybe we still Into the North which is less susceptible to removal, and then grab a mountain. So next turn can go for Questing Beast, which at least gets past all the Squirrel tokens, and has a more immediate impact than Orfeo on an empty board. But then we are potentially looking to combo kill our opponent with a couple pump spells. Signet, so lots of ram from the opponent as well. Down to two cards in hand. And a Reckless Charge could be fun too. But I think we'll keep it simple with Questing Beast. And hope it doesn't get removed. This is a type of hand which could kill out of nowhere with enough mana. Reckless Charge for Hastes. But yeah, we are missing Trample, so any 1-1 one -one Squirrel token could get in the way. It's going to be Chatterfang. And our opponent passes to Enlarge as well. Well, I'll probably just go for Orfeo here. Double Questing Beast Power. Hope that works out. Conan seems to have a response. Deadly Dispute will make Treasure a Squirrel and draw two. 
Right, that's eight coming across. Opponent takes it. And next turn we could potentially set up a kill. First Harun games makes a squirrel and a 1-1 token. Opponent still has a little bit of mana untapped. Reading Questing Beast. That's gonna take them a few minutes. Alright. So can't quite enlarge, but uh, yeah, we definitely have lethal if there's no interaction here. Maybe it's fine to play an Archimancer and then I can still Titanic Growth and Unleash Fury. But I uh, want to be a little cautious. So ideally we would Titanic Growth first, then double with Orfeo, then double with Unleash Fury. But if there is some Insta Speed removal, then I may skip the Titanic Growth and just attack for 8 and then double with Unleash Fury. Maybe they'll jump with Chatterfang as well, so probably don't want to go all out right now. Or they could activate Chatterfang to shrink down Questing Beast, in which case we might respond with Titanic Growth and Unleash Fury. Alright, opponent jumps. And then they'll try and shrink down, so we might have to use Titanic Growth to save Questing Beast. And since we don't have Trample, that's going to be necessary here. Puts it up to 8 toughness, and then essentially takes 5. And alright, opponent concedes, so Questing Beast was going to survive, and opponent will be forced to replay Chatterfang, and next turn enlarge can certainly set up the kill, giving plus 7 and Trample. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that's missing green mana, so I don't think we can keep. Okay, this is better. Up against the Augur of Agonies, so card draw, maybe control deck. So Rhythm could be useful if we're expecting some counter spells. Can lead with Rhythm instead of Stormseeker, depending on what the board looks like. And then Enlarge could be key at dealing a massive chunk of damage, doubled by Orfeo. Could use a 2-drop to apply some early pressure. A Leyline of the Void we don't really care about. A couple creatures that could maybe come back from the graveyard, but uh, overall not too concerned. Okay, the Hellion could certainly do some damage. So, still kind of lacking Rhythm instead of Stormseeker, but it's close. Just less susceptible to removal. Then we will need double green for Enlarge. Corrosion. Okay, opponent may be an enchantment or mill deck. Carry it. it. We can give haste with rhythm and then we can also play Stormseeker if we'd like. Or we can just go for partners, but there's no other creature in play to really leverage. Could also go for Orfeo, but doesn't seem as appealing, so we'll give it haste. Play Stormseeker and that can enter with a plus one counter. Give itself haste and hit for four. And that can also maybe enable Karyotid to tap for two mana instead of one. Alright, there's the Augur of Agonies. And yeah, we can do quite some damage here already. Could play Hellion. And then... Give that haste. Although, kind of prefer getting an extra creature down, and the partner seems pretty strong here. One mana short of also playing Hellion or Mr. Orfeo. Enters with a counter. And then Stormseeker can uh, pump the partners. So that gains haste, and will pump Stormseeker by four. 
and attack for 11. Okay, so if there's no board wipe, we should be in good shape. Can enlarge next turn for Trample, or maybe Mr. Orfeo. Wizard class draws, triggers Quasa, and Psychic Corrosion. Opponents at 13, double blue available, and a hard cover. Six more toughness, can now start looting, but we have ample ways to end the game here. And I'm kind of liking enlarge on partners. And then we can nature's way as well if we'd like. Augur gonna draw. And scoop it up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's kind of creature light. And the lands also come into play tapped up against Sahili. So the menace on blade is useful. I like the pump spells, but yeah, two lands is a little awkward here. Okay, can give this a shot. Also pretty heavy on the tapped lands, but uh, Domri's Ambush can take out Planeswalkers as well if we eventually find a creature. Which does not appear to be the case just yet. At least we can give our creature haste right away. Ooh, got uh, strength incarnate. So, yeah, I mean, if we keep hitting our land drops, or Fio into Strength Incarnate could definitely do some damage. Opponent appears to be an artifact heavy deck with a treasure map to scry. And hopefully, there's no rebuke to counter or Fio. Wash away instead. Yeah, that's quite effective. So, all our hopes with the Strength Incarnate now. As our opponent keeps on ramping. Okay, can play our 5-drop. And it does have Trample, so it gets past those Servo Tokens quite easily. Invoke the winds to steal it. Yeah, that's not what we wanted to see. Replay Orfeo. Now we still have some useful tools in hand, which may be able to combine and one-hit KO the opponent, but it's not going to be easy. I have Let's see how you respond to genius. Opponent hits us for seven. And then we'll have to do some math here. Okay, so I have six mana available. So what's the most damage we can deal? Use the two one mana pump spells. Rampage, Unleash Fury. That's six, ten, twelve, twenty-four, forty-eight damage. So yeah, if there's no one mana interaction, that's game. So... Yeah, well, I guess we'll go for it. Start with the Sorcery Speed Reckless Charge. And then, in response to the trigger, we want to cast some instants here. I guess we don't technically have to go all in, but... Submit one, in response, Giant Growth. Rampage. And Unleash Fury and Orpheus ability can do the honors to get us up to 48. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, they stole our 5 drop, countered our commander for 1 mana, but we still got there. So it shows that the deck can be pretty resilient. 
and only really folds to instant speed removal. And yeah, if you like aggressive pump spell based creature combo decks, then Mr. Orfeo might be the brawl deck for you. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.